Oscar Bevis for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm here today at the BT Tower with Dubois vs Fujimoto and Tommy Fury's ring return on the bill labelled the last fight before Christmas, or was oh, the fight before Christmas, should I say? And I'm with BT's Mr. John Rawlin. John, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Daniel Dubois, back again for a, another London show, um, topping the bill again. He's really starting to make some moves. Well, he's becoming a star, isn't he? Frank Warren's talking about how he wants to see him in a position where he can challenge for a world title within the next year. This is another potentially big step in the right direction because this fight could get him a, a high ranking with the WBA. He's already got a decent ranking with the WBC and the WBO. This is another move forward, provided he wins. And it also increases his fan base in the Far East because Fujimoto's only lost one fight Japanese fighter, he's got a following over there, and uh, this is a, another big occasion. You know, you've seen you've seen him fight Daniel over the last year, and you'll be aware of how he's selling fights out now, how the public is really warming to him, and this is another chance to see a star in the making in the flesh before Christmas. The Japanese heavyweight, it's not something that we're used to seeing too much, and even Daniel said just now, he was uh, not too aware of many heavyweights coming out of Asia, so a bit of an unknown quantity, we know Daniel's going to be taller than him. Um, yeah, something that's a little bit different and perhaps a, a new challenge for Daniel? Well, he stands just over six foot. I mean, most of the uh, big heavyweights that we've seen uh, coming out of Japan have been sumo wrestlers, haven't they, rather than boxers. I can't think of another highly ranked uh, Japanese heavyweights, but Japanese boxing through the performance of uh, Inui, who's uh, become a, a, a worldwide buzz. star. Yeah. It's on a little bit of a high at the moment, so make no doubt about it, people will be watching this one, and he'll be up here with a, with a, a great opportunity. He's only got the one career defeat, and if he were to beat Daniel, obviously the odds are going to be massively stacked against it, but if he were to beat Daniel, then he would be right up there. Of course, Frank said he wants to get Daniel in a place where people are going to have to face him as a mandatory challenger, and they've got no choice to sort of avoid him. Um, Joshua Ruiz is where the majority of the belts are at the moment, of course, that's on December the 7th. Um, is it going to be tough to sort of, once that's done and there's going to be mandatories and the belts are dotted about, is it going to be quite tough perhaps to get Daniel in the position for one of those guys to face him, considering the amount of high profile heavyweights that there are? Well, as ever, you know, I mean, the politics of, of boxing are difficult, aren't they? You heard Daniel at the press conference saying that, in his opinion, uh, Joshua against Ruiz is a pick and fight. He said he thinks that whoever wants it the most could wind up being the winner of that one and uh, it's by no means certain that Anthony Joshua is going to come back from the Middle East with the, the world title that he craves as well as that uh, Deontay Wilder fighting against Ortiz that's coming up before too long and uh, th there will be opportunities it's the way it shakes down and over the next year opportunities will arise and uh, yeah Frank's been in the business an awful long time Frank Warren and he he knows his way around the politics of the sport and he will deliver I'm absolutely convinced of that and I think if uh, Daniel Dubois continues winning comes through this on the 21st then 2020 could potentially be a huge year for him then there's a possibility as well before a world title fight of a contest against Against Joe Joyce, that is a, a very real possibility, and that I think will come at some stage in 2020. You said about Joshua Ruiz. Can I ask for your opinions on what you'd expect to happen on well, December the 7th? I, 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 like everybody else, thought Anthony Joshua was going to win first time around. But having seen the fight, you know, he wasn't just beaten; he was really badly beaten in the first contest. I think he's going to be psychologically very much more up for it this time and from what I've seen on, uh, on, on YouTube and in interviews he appears to have lost weight so I would anticipate a more mobile Anthony Joshua which I think is going to be very much to his, to his favour. I, I, I think Joshua is going to come back with a win but then I thought that last time so you know who knows. Okay and I'm um the ring return of Tommy Fury as well. I mean, I saw something earlier which said it's been, when he gets in the ring for his third fight, it would have been around a calendar year from his debut. So considering sort of the madness that he's had in the middle, to have ended his first professional year with three fights is actually not too bad. 
No, and he's, he's got a, a huge profile now. You know, say whatever you like about Love Island, it's, it's not something I'd set my alarm for to watch, but it, it gets a massive following. And as uh, Tommy told us, his social media following now is something over 3 million, which is an extraordinary number. So he's become... He's got more Instagram followers than Tyson, even. Well, so, well you, if, yeah. in that case, that tells, that tells, you know, that tells you the story, doesn't it? He, uh, among among a certain part of the public he has a huge following and um, now he wants to prove himself as a fighter he says that it's all very well being famous but what he really wants is to be a famous fighter and this is another step in that direction he's hoping that a fair few of those three million come along to cheer him on and see what he's really about as a man you said that he has to be sort of wary of the way people perceive him and the fact that you know he doesn't want to be known as someone alongside the likes of KSI Logan, Logan Paul who are high profile celebrities that have just managed to get into a ring we know he's well schooled he's been in the gym since six he said training with Ricky Hatton so um, quite a lot of pressure on Tommy's shoulders to go out there and prove that you know he is a he is a top talent well he looks the part doesn't he and there's obviously a long way to go in boxing terms he's still a baby he's only he's only 20 um, he's, he's only had those two fights and he's still learning, but I've got a lot of respect for Ricky. He's, he's clearly in a good gym and he's going to be learning good habits, moving in the right direction. And uh, let's, let's just judge him on his appearance when he gets in the ring. So far, so good. He's looked the part to date. Now he's got the profile, the public profile, and the learning curve continues. But, uh, you know, the next two or three years are going to be very interesting. You said you wouldn't set your alarm for Love Island. Was it set for KSI Logan Paul? No. In a word, Have you seen no. any of it? Um, I, I saw the Billy Joe Saunders yeah. fight, which is a proper fight. Um, I, I, I'm not going to be. Uh, I'm not going to hide my opinion of this. I, it's not for me. It's not. Uh, you know, neither of them would stand up to decent amateur fighters. Never mind professional fighters. But if they've got a following and if people want to see it, then so be it. I don't suppose I should sort of really say, no, it shouldn't happen. But so far as I'm concerned, somebody who's had a lifetime following boxing and commentating on boxing, it's not really for me. Is it something that BT would have entertained? You'd have to ask BT. I'd, okay. uh, I am not sure. I'm not sure. But uh, Frank, Frank Warren, who's BT's principal promoter, has said he wouldn't have been interested in, in, uh, in, in, in promoting that particular contest. I, you know, there's two ways of looking at it. It's, got, it's, got, it's garnered massive interest, particularly in the United States and, among, uh, and in a certain age group. And if it brings greater interest in boxing and to the platforms that uh, televise boxing, then I guess there's a justification. But that doesn't make it a decent boxing match. You know, the two, two guys who, who have no experience, zero. Hey, that's fair enough. The real boxing, Mr. Canelo Alvarez. Um, of course, a stoppage win over Sergey Kovalev, a pretty devastating end actually in the 11th round to a fight which many people actually had him down on the scorecards. Some people had him up. It was half and half, I suppose, at that point in the fight. Can I get your thoughts on that fight and perhaps where Canelo goes from here? Because we've heard a lot about... You know, Central Canelo moving to cruiserweight. We've also heard a lot about him coming back down and perhaps fighting Billy Joe. So can you sort of give me your opinions on that fight and where Canelo can go from here? Well, Canelo's the cash cow. He, he makes more money in boxing than, uh, than YouTubers and uh, than anybody else possibly bar the, the elite level heavyweights. And even there, he's right up there. So he's the one that people worldwide know and, and he's the person that people want to see. Um, where he goes from here, I don't know. I don't think he's big enough to be a cruiserweight. I think that uh, I think that's you know I think that's fanciful. Uh, fighting Kovalev was he was it was nip and tuck until he found the knockout punches in the eleventh round. Um, Did he prove perhaps that he picked the right champion in Kovalev and that there were some other guys in the division that? Perhaps yeah, he, the likes of Bivol, that if he were to get in with it, it could be a different story. Yeah, he did pick the right. He did pick the right. Uh, the right champion. It's why. Uh, it's why Anthony Yard went looking for Kovalev because Kovalev, at the age of 36, with his best days behind him and having not really lived the life, 
he was of the people in that division. I think the most beatable champion, and that's what uh, what Canelo Canelo proved. You know, every great champion like Canelo has fantastic matchmakers behind them, and they chose the right man. Where he goes from here, that's going to be interesting to see. I think uh, I think he would certainly like a fight against Billy Joe Saunders if it were to happen. But as ever, you know, I mean, the fight that he'll go for is the one which generates the biggest money. That's what uh, that's what Golden Boy are going to be about, and that's uh, the way in which they're going to be looking from here on. Are you someone who would be a fan of the trilogy with Golovkin? Well, I think Golovkin beat him twice and didn't get the verdict. You know, I know, I know a lot of people out there on social media disagree with me. There's a lot of people who are huge Canelo fans, and they think that uh, they think the opposite. But for me. I think Golovkin beat him twice. Uh, so perhaps the, he deserves the trilogy. Well, regardless. maybe he does deserve another one. But if he got another one, is he going to beat him? Is he going to get a points decision against Canelo? I think perhaps we already know the answer to that. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Fury um, transcended into the WWE, and now uh, videos of him training with Darren Till, MMA star. Is there sort of a worry with Fury that perhaps this is all going to get a bit too on top of him and that when he fights Wilde on February the 22nd, the preparation may not be like he would want it to go, perhaps? I don't think so. I, think I might have so. worded that quite badly. But you understand what I'm saying? Is there sort of too much on Fury's plate at the moment considering the biggest fight of his career is perhaps two or three months away? No, I think Tyson's having fun. And I think uh, one of his principal enemies in the past when he wound up getting out of shape and falling out of, in love, out of love with boxing. And I think he would agree that one of the things he doesn't like is being bored. And I think Ben Davison, his trainer, would also say that it's, ki it's keeping him interested and keeping him with a target in life. And if that's, uh, if that's wrestling at the moment, I think it's, I think it's harmless fun. You know, I, think, uh, I don't think Tyson's doing himself any harm at all. He's making a few quid through it. He knows that it's not the real deal. And he knows that the Deontay Wilder fight somewhere down the line is the one that everybody's talking about. And I think that if that does happen on February the 22nd, provided Wilder comes through the fight against Ortiz, then Tyson is going to be absolutely ready for that. You know, I can't wait. And I think every boxing fan out there wants to see that fight again. And I think Tyson yeah. will be absolutely up for that. And I think there'll be no question about his focus when it comes to... How much does an Ortiz win over Deontay Wilder disrupt the plans for Fury next year? Well, an Ortiz win over Deontay Wilder would probably finish the Wilder fight. Uh, I, I, I don't believe it's going to happen, despite the fact that uh, Wilder had trouble with Ortiz first time around. I think he'll win more easily this time, or to, uh, Wilder. I think he'll win by knockouts, and I think it'll be all systems go then to the, the big rematch. Massive fight, yeah. yeah. Finally, Josh Warrington. I spoke to him at um, MTK show on Saturday night. There's sort of been a lot of traction online between him and Shakur Stevenson after he picked up the WBO world title. Um, Shakur Stevenson has been making his own fight posters as well. He wants unification with Josh. Josh wants unification. Um, a massive fight that can land on BT next year and surely for Josh one that would be front of the queue. Well, huge fight, isn't it? Massive fight. Um, and, and Josh has talked all the time about wanting the very, very biggest targets. I think, he, I think the possibility of a world of a, of a unification fight against the Chinese guy, that's a very real possibility at uh, Elland Road, possibly next May, but Shakur Stevenson's right in the mix now. And not only for, not only for, for Josh, it could also be Carl Frampton could be in the shake-up there and maybe if Frampton gets in against Shakur Stevenson, then maybe, you know, the big rematch down the road somewhere, Carl Frampton against, uh, against Josh. That becomes a possibility, or indeed Stevenson. Yeah. You know, I mean, the one thing that the uh, Inui Donair fight has shown us is that the public love to see the best fighting the best. And, uh, the I World think Boxing Super Series can take a lot of credit for that as yeah, well. Yeah, that's for, what I say. Well, yeah, that's with Taylor say. and yeah. um, Progre as well, yeah. Yeah, people like seeing the best against the best. And I think that deep down, most fighters want to see that as well. And Josh wants to walk away from the sport knowing that he's passed every test that's put in front of him. And he wants to walk away from the sport, ultimately, knowing that he was the very best man in the world.